compound inequalities with compound inequalities like a compound sentence we're joining two things together and there's actually three different ways it can be done it can be done with the word and it can be done with the word or and it can also be done by just inserting another expression um, between two inequality signs. So on your assignment for today, you're doing the grade ones first. So I'm going to do the ones that have the word and in them first, and I'll come back to the other ones. So when you solve a compound inequality, you basically just solve both sides of the inequality. So on this first one, number four, I'm going to subtract eight from each side, and I'm going to be left with x is greater than or equal to nine. So just like with regular inequalities, I'm just going to come up to my number line, and I'm going to find nine. I'm going to put a circle there, and this has an equals to, so I have to fill in that circle to show that it's greater than or equal to 9. And it's telling me that x, oops, did my math wrong, 1. Greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to fill in my circle at 1. And I want to think about where would the values be for x that are greater than or equal to 1. So they would be to the right of the equals of the circle. So I'm going to draw an arrow going to the right. So that's the inequality for the left hand side. For the right hand side, I have x divided by 7 is less than or equal to 1. And so when we have a variable over a number, we want to think of that as one times x over seven. So there's this little invisible one here. And then I can further expand that and say that is the same as one seventh times x. Because I could put a one under the x and multiply across the top and across the bottom and I would get x over seven. So the reason I want you to think about it in this um, like this is because we've learned how how to deal with fractions that have a variable attached to them and what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal so to get this so that i only have the x there i'm going to multiply by 7 over 1 and that's going to cancel my 7s on the left and over here i'm going to multiply by 7 over 1 so that's going to give me that less is e or excuse me x is less than or equal to 7. So I'm going to go up to my number line and find 7 and it has a closed circle because there's an equals to sign there and this statement is values that are less than 7. x has to be less than or equal to 7. So in that situation, they would be going this direction. Now, my solution set is wherever these two lines occur together. So it's when I have and, I'm going to have two outer um, circles, and all of my values for x that are in between those two circles should work in both of these inequalities. In other words, if I substitute a value, any value that's in between these two circles, or including them because they're closed, I should get a true statement here, and I should get a true statement here. So let's just try two. If I put 2 in for this inequality, I'm going to get 2 plus 8, which is 10, 
Is that greater than or equal to 9? Yes, it is. If I substitute 2 in for this x, 2 sevenths is less than or equal to 1, that is true as well. So I want to check at least one of my possible values for x before I write my final answer. And my final answer is gotten by looking at the values that are at the two ends and writing those down here, taking my variable that is in between them and putting it in between those two numbers and then writing a inequality wherein I am going to put an inequality sign here and an inequality sign here to reflect what my number line is showing. So my number line is showing that 1 is less than or equal to x. And it's also showing that x is less than or equal to 7 because any value in here and including 7 would be less than or equal to it. So my answer written out is this. My answer being graphed is this. Let's look over at number 9. Same thing on number 9. I'm going to solve these two inequalities separately. So negative 1 plus 5 n is greater than negative 26. I'm going to add 1 to each side. I'm going to have negative 25 on the right and 5n on the left. So to just get n all by itself, I'm going to divide each side by 5. And I'm going to end up with n is greater than negative 5. So I'm going to come up here, find negative 5, put an open circle there because I don't have the equals or equal to sign there. And then I'm going to draw my arrow all the way to the right. So any of these values out here should make this a true statement. Now I'm going to look at this side. 7n minus 2 is less than or equal to 12. So I'm going to add 2 to each side. And I'm going to get 14 and 7n, divide each side by 7. And I'm going to get n is less than or equal to 2. So here's 2, less than or equal to, I'm going to have a closed circle. And n has to be less than that. So like if I chose 0, is 0 less than or equal to 2? Yes, it is. So my arrow is going to come this direction. And the place where my 2 overlap is right here. And that's going to be where my n is. And I've made this kind of. So n is going to make its home right in between these two circles. And now the last thing I have to do is write um, my inequality. So I'm going to bring this number down, negative 5. I'm going to bring this number down, 2. I'm going to bring my n down right in the middle. And I'm going to put my signs in. So negative 5 is less than n. And n is less than or equal to. There's a closed circle there. So that's how I write it out. And this is how it looks on a graph. Number 11. 8x plus 8 is greater than or equal to negative 64. So subtract 8 from each side. And I'm going to get it's plus a negative. So that's going to be negative 72. 
divide both sides by 8. So x is greater than or equal to negative 9. So I'm coming up to my number line, and I'm going to find negative 9. Now negative 9 isn't on here, but approximately it would be right here, in between negative 8 and negative 10. So I'm going to put my circle there. Next one, negative 7, running out, minus negative 8x is greater than or equal to negative 79. So I'm going to add 7 to each side, which is going to give me negative 8x is greater than or equal to negative 72. Now we have to stop here and have a little conversation. My next step would be to divide, to divide both sides by negative 8. And the conversation we need to have is whenever you divide both sides by a negative number or multiply both sides by a negative number and you're dealing with inequalities, your sign is going to reverse. It's going to flip. So this sign is no longer greater than or equal to. It is less than or equal to. But then we do the division exactly as we would. Negative 8x divided by negative 8 is just going to leave us with x. And negative 72 divided by negative 8 is going to leave us with 9 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And my circle is going to be closed. Now, I forgot to draw my arrow the first time, so that would be going that direction. This arrow would be going this direction. And the area that they intersect, well, not intersect, but overlap, is this area in between the two dots. So that's where x resides. x is anywhere in there. Um, so 0. Let's choose 0. If x is 0, 8 times 0 is 0. And then is 8 greater than or equal to negative 64? Yes, it is. Well, let's try it on this side. If x is 0, this whole quantity is going to be 0. And negative 7 minus 0 is greater than negative 79. So it looks like I've graphed on my number line my solution. So now I just have to write it. So I'm going to come down and bring these two points that are the outer limits of my solution set. So I've got negative 9 and 9. I've got x in the middle. And negative 9 is less than or equal to x. And x is less than or equal to, yeah, I've got to put the, um, less than or equal to signs in there. Okay, so those are the ones that all have the word and in them. I'm going to do another video. Whoops. Yeah, those are the ones that have and. I'm going to do another video that features these that do not have the word and in them. But basically, you're solving them in a the very similar way.